Welcome to episode 32 of Fort Fritz. I am Fritz, joined as always by co-host Man Daddy. Hi! Nick Spry. Hello! Angela. Ciao! And Kaz. Hola! Thank you guys so much for coming over. Um, I'm in the garage. Mm -hmm. Wait. Thank you. I didn't know he had a garage. You got a garage. I've never seen a garage here. All I had to do was figure out that the keychain in the front, the foyer, if you will, Uh it's got three keys on it. Oh. I've never touched them before. I always imagined that they did something else, right? I touched one. As soon as I picked it up, one of the, the wall, right? This used to be the fucking dining room. Right. Uh-huh. Now it's a garage. Opens up into a garage. It's crazy. So your dining room converts into a garage. That doesn't seem very sanitary. Yeah, not like, at I'm all. I'm sure that's some sort of health code violation. Yeah. Uh, plus, also, was it like one of those cute little hooks for the key rings? Like a, like a bless this house with like, like a bear a star. holding a star? Or was it like actual human Jesus? fingers? Like just going like that. Was all I like- got to say is if you think that's unsanitary, then any drive-in diner... In America, Boom. Uh, has Face. a huge lawsuit. Face. Wait, are you are you denigrating Flavor Town right now? I'm not denigrating Flavor Town. I, I would never do that. that makes so sense. now all we have in the garage that I opened with a key set, and again, an entire wall of the fort turned into a garage, which is not surprising at this point, right? Like, I mean, the fort sort of transforming itself. But how does that happen? It's it's ridiculous because the blueprints, as we talked about, yeah. Previously, the blueprints of this house show 4,000 square feet. It's way more. It's kind of a design flaw. So, all right. Well, did you go inside of it? Yes, I did. And uh, all I can see are all of these fucking boxes. What so about no cars? cars. Where's the cars? Exactly. Jinx, you owe me coke. It smells like a garage, though, it right? Smells, like, it's yeah. undeniably it's a garage. It's like, moth, like mothballs a little bit. But uh, what I will say is that we have just boxes and boxes stacked to the ceiling. And it, again... You could probably have parked an RV in here. It's huge. This is a very vacuous space. It's echoey. It's echoey. It's like... Um, I see organized boxes over here. I've already gone through those. Those are household objects. Wait, Towels. What? Towels. Okay. Spoons. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of burnt spoons. And then doll toys. Uh, pillows. What do you mean? Doll toys. Doll toys. Stockings. Small booties. Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait. Can you not minute. lie about them? And then over to the right... I see an entire section of boxes that no. look markedly aged. These have these are old boxes. I mean, how can you tell a box is aged just by looking at it? Because I of mean, the foxing, man, daddy. This is the foxing of the cardboard, man, daddy. What? Look to your left. Okay. Cutlery boxes. Okay. Now look to your right. Those are some old ass boxes. Thank you. Yeah, okay, I'm sorry. I wasn't. I was just. Uh, guys, come over here. Got some boxes open. Is that Angela? Is that a good idea? Jesus she's already Christ. opened most of them. Like, yeah, there's not got... even any cool ones to open yet. Are you serious? These are all like cardboard. They're right? just so flimsy. <laughs> just open them. Yeah, but the foxing. Oh my god, calm down about the foxing. But surely you you you, you can't think it's a good idea to just open somebody's, especially a dead somebody's belongings, their boxes. Well, here's the difference. If they are taped shut, uh-huh. all right, I'll respect that. But if someone does like that quadruple fold, fold. of a box, oh, yeah, that little, you know, like, that like tricky, tricky thing you can right. do. Uh-huh. Yeah, I think that's like fair, fair game. game. I, have, I have trouble doing that. Do you ever? If anyone ever does that on the first time, they're a freaking wizard. You yeah. just gotta bend one of the flaps. One of the flaps just have to get bent. I you feel just like gotta that's, finesse it. It's fine. Okay. It's like that's the, probably the person that could do a Rubik's cube really fast. Geniuses. Yes. <laughs> it's so really liking, not that complicated, guys. Come <laughs> <right>. on. <laughs> you're liking someone who could do the the quad <laughs> fold. Yeah. To someone who can solve a Rubik's cube. <laughs> Quote, really fast. Unquote. Really fast. <laughs> so this yes. is like box origami to you. It's, it's like, like good blows like your like mind. spatial relations and like colors and not moving the stickers. What is this, Angela? It, it looks like it's a photo collection. But, but, uh, this box over here, not the one with the rat oh, no. shit in it. No. Well, all of them have a little shit. bit of rat shit How do you know it's rat shit? I was going to say, yeah, that one looks It's mostly good. rat shit. coffee beans. Yeah, you know rat shit when you How see rat How big are these rats that you're seeing if they're the size of coffee beans? Dear Lord. Oh, my God, these photos. What's wrong? What is it? Are they not in focus? They are, you sick bastard, Angela. Oh, no, finally. I it was a it. The setup. Other, the other shoe drops. It was a goddamn setup. Uh, they're just a bunch of picture men's balls. Oh, oh, oh no, 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 no. Oh, Those uh, are close up. I yeah. mean, ah. Uh, but, but they're beautiful and they make me think things. Listen, I don't think, <laughs> I don't think people enjoy the diversity of men's balls enough. So many different kinds. I certainly do. And 
<laughs> Wait a minute. What are you? Are you what? pocketing are, are some you of these? Are you pocketing this ball photos? Fritz. All right. Fritz. You know what? For Fritz. Research. Purposes. Seriously? No. Stop. Come I get on. It. Guys, no. those are some of my best ball pictures. It was, it was my wallet. All right. Hand me a box. I'm going to look through it. Man Daddy Alley Oop. Oh, okay. And. and Okay, it's got that fold thing. It's got... Ah, that is difficult to get through. It's got, this got, how is that taking, difficult? This can take a few minutes. Hold on. You okay. literally just pull you one just, flap and they all go. But how do I know which flap to grab? I mean, this could be like, you know, this is the fort. This could be like a bomb if I grab the yellow wire, the red wire. I don't know what's going on here. You so. just made it tighter. I'm just going to go... I'm just going to go aggro on it. Oh my God. Ah, here we go. Oh, okay. Oh, more photos. Photos of just... I'm not exactly sure... Mm-hmm. Take your time. Please describe us. Take your time. Yeah. It's puppy tails. That's it. Adorable puppy tails. Oh, I want to see It's you. just little okay. puppy tails. How do you know? Here you go. Here you go. Take a puppy tail. Look, you can tell. Like look at, okay. Okay. Look at that. Tell me that's not a puppy tail. Look at that and tell me it's not a puppy tail. It just looks like a smaller dog tail. There's so much more dog to look. Okay. Wait. Yeah. Fritz is taking those as well. Fritz is, is taking a, those as well. That is a beautiful Man? set of balls. He's got nothing. No, those weren't balls. Those were puppy tails. Not what I saw. Does anyone find uh, the, the all the amount of photographs that he has boxed up a little alarming? Guys, so it's. No? I mean, it's a lot of balls and puppy tails. I mean, yeah, it is. That, you know, I mean, and like everything else that little boys are made of, right? Balls and puppy dogs. Snails and snails. <laughs> so uh, what? You know, this the the old poem. Little boys are made of balls, and, balls, and, balls and, puppy and puppy dog tails, and little girls are made of sugar and and and, and cinnamon and and uh, cardamom. That's way more delightful than balls and puppy tails. Yep, <laughs> that's little boys, man. They're little assholes. Hey, Kaz. Yep. You want, the, you want to open this box? I mean, sure. Well, does it have tape on it? Cut. There it is. Oh, I guess I'll find out. Is uh, it folded? Yeah, no, it's folded. I guess I can open it. By the law of, of Angela's garage box opening. Uh, it's like Christmas. It is. Like Ew. It's like a weird Christmas. Yeah. Trash Christmas. I mean, these are... <laughs> trash <laughs> it's Who trash? doesn't love it? I mean, at this point, it's... I don't, I don't want this. I don't want this. This is disturbing. Do it. This is like... So, it looks like... You guys remember old, like, uh, like dating services where you had to like send in a VHS when, when you were dating in the 80s you don't remember doing that like via re- a, a VHS <laughs> tape mm, no. yes I remember in the 80s when I was like 7 when I was sending and you were that sending out your VHS dating, dating, dating profile dating profile. VHS. <laughs> oh no oh, oh no no no, no. Yeah, but it, like the faces are all like scratched out on what? the on the the covers and like the eyes and it's just like Ooh. hair and little bits of wig taped to the pictures what? and that's like wow. this is creepy shit. Like what is going on? Yeah, like the weird serial killer stuff where the like magazine cutouts and everything's just. Kinda- no, wait, 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 what do you mean serial killer cutouts? Because you said like dating profiles. This is starting to freak me out, guys. Is this a box? Is this another one of those murderabilia boxes that just got misplaced? Because, uh, <laughs> Nick's uh, Fry. Uh, I can't. I can't handle it. Mm, that's Fry, a classic. Down. Down. Very nervous. Classic Nick's Fry. Right? Right? Calm down. I'm starting, I'm starting to freak out. I'm starting to freak out because guys, guys, guys. Have you ever heard of Rodney Alcala? No. Not a fan. So Rodney Alcala was also known as the dating game killer. <gasps> that's, a, that's a hip name. That's a hip name to have. That it's is kind of like nasty. cool. But, I mean, I, I, it's not succinct, but yeah, it's... It it's on the nose. Well, it's pretty on the nose. It could be someone that's dating game and then killing it. You no, know? unfortunately, so, this guy is a real... He's a real piece of shit. Oh. All right. Please be forewarned, this next story has elements of abuse against minors, sexual assault, rape, murders, and graphic depictions of violence. Rodney Alcala, uh, he was born in 1943. Uh, he was born originally under the name Rodrigo Jacques Alcala Bucuar uh, in San Antonio, Texas. Okay. So he is, as of this date, around 74 years old. He is still alive. He was sentenced to death. I feel like the best way to approach his story is to kind of start at the end and then work backwards into what he was. Uh, most recently, since he has been sentenced to death in 2013, uh, he was charged with two more murders that happened in 1971 and 1977. He originally pleaded not guilty, and then, because he was already trying to uh, uh, fight his death sentence in the appellate courts in California, ended up choosing to plea to guilty to these two counts in New York so that he could focus on his cases in California. Okay, so this guy is, he, number one, is a mass murderer. He is a, not a mass murderer, he is a serial killer. Okay. One of them was actually uh, quite famous. She was the daughter of uh, the 
nightclub owner of Ciro's in New York, and she was the goddaughter of Sammy Davis Jr. and Dean Martin, just to give oh, you uh, a clue to how high profile she was. Connected to the Rat Pack. Before this, his death sentence that he was appealing was due to five murders uh, that he was found guilty of in 2010 and sentenced. Uh, this comes after two previous trials. So this was his third trial. The first two trials he had been found guilty and uh, sentenced to death, and they were both overturned. What? So on his How third they go around, I know this case is pretty crazy. On his third go around, he was eventually tried and sentenced to death due to a lot of DNA evidence. Uh, originally, he, this was for one murder, and then after <clears throat> DNA evidence, after the 27 years had happened, they were able to confirm other victims and his DNA and their DNA, and he they decided to take the cases and try them as one in the state of California. Wow. So Rodney was. One of several children. He was the only male. He had several sisters. Uh, At the age of eight or nine, I believe in 1951, his father abandoned the family and took off. So leaving his mother alone and leaving Rodney as the only male in the family. Uh, She then relocated the family to Mexico for several years. And then decided after a brief period that it was time to move the family back to the America and uh, took them to Los Angeles. Where did they move them, sir? They moved to Mexico. Mexico? Yes, from San Antonio, wow. Texas, and then did they relocated to Los Angeles. Several years pass, and at the age of 17, he decides to enlist in the Army. He serves for uh, four years, uh, from 1960 to 1964, before he is discharged medically due to a psychiatrist's diagnosis of severe antisocial uh, psychiatric Ooh, behavior. That's not good. Or, I'm sorry, uh, severe antisocial personality disorder. Oh, that's worse. Yeah, mm-hmm. after he had that's a breakdown. Terrible. Yeah. That's, that's terrible. That's, 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 that's worse. That's bad. That's worse. I have a little bit of both, so you can, you can feel there's just a slight difference, really. Just a mix, slight right? difference. Yeah. And the story yeah. goes that he had a breakdown while he was serving in the Army, and he left Fort Bragg in Texas and hitchhiked to his mother's house. Several years pass. He goes to UCLA. He obtains... He's a very smart man, by the way. Uh, he has they an IQ are. around 135 mm-hmm. uh, on, on the IQ scale. Uh, yeah, scale. that's over, like, uh, I, I think 130 is... Or 129 is gifted. Mm-hmm. And anything above that is, like, Mensa's, like, what, what, 135? Yeah, whatever. They're named after a table. But he did get a degree. <laughs> 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 they are. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just throw shade at Mensa? Don't. That's not <laughs> beef you want, dude. Uh, uh, like, you better fucking it. squash bring that it, shit immediately. Whatever. No. So you obtain his uh, a fine arts degree from the Liberal Arts College at UCLA. Uh, so the the first crime that we really see him commit it happens in 1968. Uh, he is driving his car without the plates on it, and he pulls alongside the sidewalk and a uh, he invites an eight-year-old girl, Tally Shapiro, to get into the car, saying that he is a family friend. So his car had no plates to keep a low profile. Correct. Which is like screaming obvious <laughs> pedophile. Correct. Over, right. right, yes. Yeah. What year was this again? This is 1968. Oh. And he is 25, 25. years old. A, a nearby motorist sees this and suspects that something fishy is going on and so follows them to where uh, Alcala drives back to his apartment. Nice nearby motorist. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Well done. Good, right? Zero. Good Samaritan. See something? Right? Say something. Or, like, follow that motherfucker. Yeah. That's a much worse slogan, no. though. <laughs> yeah, see something, say something. It's like, nicest thing, but follow, follow that, that mother- motherfucker, <laughs> really. Trail them. Get their home <laughs> address. He sees the two go into the, his apartment and calls the police. They come to the door they knock on the door. He uh, Alcala answers the door through the door. He says that he's in the middle of taking a shower and that he's trying to get ready for work and he's already running late and that he'll just be a second. So he leaves the door and the detective or the, the officer, I believe his name was Camacho, uh, after a period of time, kicks in the door and sees from where he is, his, his vantage point down the hallway into the kitchen, a trail of blood leading <gasps> in and... There are photographs of this. It's absolutely heartbreaking. There is this pool of blood, uh, uh, it, too much blood to come out of a young girl, and her little white Mary Janes strewn on the floor next to this 10-pound oh. metal bar. Oh. Her body is lying next to these. Oh. He comes in. He thinks that she is dead. He runs in the house, and Alcala has escaped out the back door and evaded the authorities. 
When he comes back into the kitchen, she starts to sputter and breathe again, and she is alive. Oh, oh good. good. So, this horrendous crime, they find out that she has been brutally beaten, strangled multiple times with this bar, uh, and raped. Oh, jeez. Oh, no. This puts him, by the year 1971, on the FBI's most wanted list. This crime. He evaded out the back door and moved during this period to New York and changed his name or went under the alias John Berger. John Berger. He used both. He attended NYU Film School and, ironically, studied under Roman Polanski. Really? Oh, yes. what? So, the way that Alcala is apprehended on this first initial charge is that two girls are in a post office in New Hampshire and they see the most wanted poster. It's raining outside. They can't go outside. And they say, oh, this looks like our camp counselor, Mr. Berger, this Alcala guy. And it's called in. They pick it up. They bring him back to California. He's tried because Tali Shapiro's family moved her to Mexico and will not allow her to testify. They cannot get a solid case against him. Oh. And so he basically pleads guilty or has to take take a plea for just uh, child molestation, which is a much, much lesser charge in that day and, day and time. Uh, he serves 34 months before he's released. 34 months? Yes. Back then, it was more on the, the, the idea that if you could rehabilitate or show some sense of remorse and get this guy to change his life, they would let them go on early release. Because back then, they had what they was called uh, indeterminate sentencing. So his actual sentence was one to life. <gasps> one? To, that's a bit of a stretch. That's a lot. You know, you know, one's okay, but life is... <laughs> so he is back on the street by 1974. He is, again, incarcerated for giving a a 13-year-old girl uh, known as Julie J. marijuana. And so he went back to jail for two years for violating parole. Uh, In 1977, after his second release, this is when a real murder spree takes place. He is also allowed to go back to New York. He commits another murder, the the murder of the uh, Ellen Hover. After he got popped for giving the kid weed in New York, they're like, all right, go ahead back. Just stay away from the kids. In California, this yes. All yeah. Right. This guy just kept on getting a pass and a pass yep. and a pass. Okay. No one did background checks back then. And so if you were a charming, nice, handsome, young, vibrant person, he was a uh, quote-unquote professional photographer. This was actually his MO to approach women. And he usually, uh, typically, he would approach girls from the age of 12 to their mid-30s and say, oh, I work for a fashion magazine. Can I take a couple of photos? And then try and get them to go into his car, and he would take them wherever. There's been a few serial killers that have used that. Yes. That's one of the ones in Mindhunter. Yeah. Uh, not Kemper, but one of the other ones did that. Which is why no girl ever falls for that now. Plus, right, they'd be like, what do I need you to take a picture of me for? I got my phone, motherfucker. Get away from yeah, exactly. me. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So this leads into 1978. Back in California, he's working for the Los Angeles Times, a very reputable paper. Nobody did a background check. He's working as a typesetter. He's also working as a wedding photographer. So now, uh, 1978? Yes. He's working for the uh, Los Angeles Times. Yes. Crazy. This is also the period in 1978, in September of 1978, he appeared on The Dating Game, one of the most popular game shows in American history. He won. Ah! Of course yeah, he did. Oh my god. That's so charming. Bold. Like you said, they're charming. Yes. Yeah. Charming and he was charming. He was suave. Uh, he has, uh, I, sh- I showed everybody a clip, uh, this sort of Farrah Fawcett feathered hair. Uh, the, the bachelorette, her name, Cheryl Bradshaw, found him to be quite funny and chose him off of his witty retorts. But then backstage, after the show was over, denied his advances saying that she found him super creepy he got very intense and that uh she wanted nothing to do with him uh, that he was totally what? different than he was on on camera so he was 35 at this point yes math ruins everything math. can we all admit that let's can we get rid of math let's no. I mean, can we start a movement That's for the whole no more math. math no more math then during the period of 1977 to 1979 he committed the five murders for which he is now imprisoned and sentenced to death so that was just preamble? Those were just like appetizer all that, murders? All that stuff was just like working up to it? Jesus. It gets worse. What? It always does. Right. In 1979, the crime that eventually brought him down uh, actually occurred on June 20th. Um, a 12-year-old Robin Samso uh, was approached while she was with her best friend at Huntington Beach by a man with a camera asking to photograph them. They were taken with the man, but a neighbor eventually interrupted the interaction and he took off 
Later that day, she was going to start answering phones at a local ballet school in exchange for lessons uh, and was supposed to go there. But after their interaction with this man, her best friend told her to take her bike and just to go off down the street. And no one ever heard from her again. Oh. Her body was found 12 days later in the mountains. Uh, Unfortunately, being on the outskirts of town, the animals had gotten at it. She had no longer had any hair. Uh, Alcala had knocked out her front teeth, and it was extremely hard to identify her. Oh, that's horrible. Due to local eyewitnesses and the uh, hard work of the police department, they eventually tracked down Rodney Alcala, specifically with the evidence that he had rented nine days after they discovered her body. A locker in Seattle, Washington, that contained... Thousands and thousands of photographs of women. Oh, like a storage container? Like a storage unit, yes. It also had uh, several duffel bags full of, quote-unquote, trophies, jewelry, uh, things that he would taken from victims. So now these We're photographs... thousands of pictures? I'm talking about at least, at least what they've said is over a thousand. Wow. And they've released over the years 120 to the public because they knew that a lot of these people had... Disappeared. Was this the uh, Los Angeles Police Department back no. when he was uh, working for the Times? Uh, the the Orange County, the West Orange County Police Department that was investigating the case. So leading into this, they found this storage unit after uh, the parole officer had been in conjunction helping them uh, point to Alcala. Uh, other evidence was given by eyewitnesses with the same description. He had changed his appearance. They found this unit. In it, they found these photographs and these earrings one of which specifically belonged to Robin Samso's mother and which Robin would wear often. And uh, that yeah, was the clenching evidence, the damning evidence that put him away. Uh, he was eventually apprehended on July 24th, uh, a month and four days after the murder of Robin Samso and brought to justice. Uh, he was tried, sentenced to death after being found guilty. And then that was overturned by the Supreme Court of California. Uh, he was tried again in 1986, and that was overthrown by the Ninth Circuit Court of, of Justice. What was the reason what? given? There was not enough available information. There was they were they found What's that say? yes, they were saying that there was enough information that was withheld or not known that they presented reasonable doubt. So again, in 2003, the third trial began, and he was eventually found guilty with new DNA evidence, and that's when they combined all five of those cases in the one summer. Originally, it was just the Robin Samso case, but there were these four other women who died uh, in that same two-year period where they consolidated everything and brought him finally to justice. But granted, he has been in jail for almost 40 years. That's insane. How how long? 40 years. He is 74 years old now. Because I was worried that he was just out running around in between, you know, just having a good old time in between. But the most disturbing thing about this is that storage unit and all those over a thousand photographs. Over 90% of the photographs could not be released to the public by the police because they were so sexually explicit. Wow. And it was not just women alone, there was also boys. Teenage boys, adult men. um, And they say out of the 120 photographs, many people have come forward to say that they have had a loved one disappear or be kidnapped. Uh, so the estimate now puts his killings, at least his assaults and his killings, somewhere between 50 to 130 cases. Oh, Holy hell. Wow. That, that's up there. And he was your classic, classic serial killer. He would pose yeah. the bodies. He would use ligatures to tie them up uh, and to humiliate strangle them, them with, to death. humiliate them. He was known, uh, the, the prosecutors said that he was known for... Uh, strangling a victim to the point of unconsciousness and then reviving them so that he could do it all over again Damn. and again and again and again. Almost like a necromancer. There was a case them back. where he used a claw hammer not only to violate a woman, but then the claw end to beat her head in before he strangled her to death with a stocking. Wow. Like one wasn't enough. Just had to keep on going with the combo bladder. And he would pose the bodies. One of his victims he posed on her knees face down in the dirt on a hillside. One of them he posed in a laundry room of her apartment complex, which actually that body was discovered four days after the death of Robin Samso. Some chilling shit, yo. This is some chilling, totally scary ass shit you got here next, Brian. Can we take a little break? Yeah. Yeah. Let's take gonna, a little break. I need to take a shower, actually. I need like a silkwood shower. Uh... Let's burn this box. Well, yeah, well, that's, that's probably a good idea. Let's burn all the boxes. That's fine. 
Fred's, most of them. Fred's careful of the fumes that come from photographs, so careful. Okay, but you, but that should make them burn quicker, right? Well, I heard the silver yeah, nitrate makes them burn super fast. Okay. So yeah. Main Daddy, fine. just go ahead and start pushing that box okay, out. Let's take a little break. Uh, okay, let's get out of here. Let's take a break. Uh, uh, man, these are creepy as hell. Okay, welcome back. Uh, we got a pretty nice fire going on with these boxes of weird crap we found in the garage. Especially on a cold night like tonight. Yeah, it feels good. Feels it's good. Like, oh, Smells like, a little toxic. A little but. bit, but you know. So you stay out of the flames or the the flames, the smoke. You should be fine. It is it. like pink and green, although it is kind of cathartic to watch it burn. Angela is also standing right next to the fire, and I keep she telling her to care. Like, like, right next to the fumes. Yeah, just take a good breath. You're going to get a bit of a buzz. You know, you're going to get a little heady. It's kind of it's kind of nice. Okay, yeah. No, don't listen to him. Take a step back. It's no, fire. No, put your face right in and go, just, good. just take it in deep. Take it in deep. Hold it in. Hold it in. Feel it. Feel it. Feel it. It smells like microwaved cabbage and spoons. How yeah. do you know how that feels? Uh, smells? Never you mind, man, daddy. I need to come over to your house for, uh, you know, some sort of Irish breakfast. That means uh, whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> and heroin? He I would, yes, like heroin cabbage. and cabbage soup. And a stout cigarette. Yeah. How many people are going to offend with this episode is what I'm really So interested many, in. so many. Like pretty much everybody across the board, yeah. I guess, what we're going for. But, I mean, I mean, it's a nice fire. I mean, it looks like we need, need to... I think there's still a few more boxes. I mean, since we've now finally figured out that weird... That weird puzzle thing at the top to actually just open them. It's way easier. You're right. You just have to just pull one of the flaps. I mean, I, I, I just could not figure it out. It just didn't make any sense to me. It was like it was like a weird tesseract in cardboard form. I couldn't figure Aww. it out. Bless your heart. I know. <laughs> Probably all these fumes I've been huffing for the last... Fritz took one of the boxes and drew eyes on it. Now he's making it into like a little puppet. Oh, he's look at him. Talk. He's so cute. Yeah. He's so cute. He's, he's so happy. He's so happy. Where's Fritz? Is he in this box? No. Oh. Oh. oh, where's Fritz? Where's Fritz? Where's Fritz? Oh, he's doing a robot fire. with it. That's so cute. Put him in the fire. Oh, look, he's doing. He's doing the robot. He's doing the robot. He's got. He's got on all seventies disco on us. It's so cool. All right, give me. Give me the box. Give me the box, Fritz. Let's look into it really quick before we. Uh, we're gonna throw it on the pyre. I guess you know. I guess it's gonna be on a fire. It's now a pyre. There's a lot of pointy things in there. Yeah, there are. So I'm gonna look at. Ooh, Hurt my butt. What? Wait. Oh my. Oh my god. What? It's an inverted crucifix. Oh. Wait, so oh. inverted, do you mean like upside down and backwards to get mathematical about it? Um, or are we just going upside down? You got I, an upside I, down crucifix it, or do you have an inverted crucifix? Can you just turn it the other way around? Okay, it, it's a crucifix. Oh, all right. It's a crucifix. Oh, yeah. We need to be careful because if there's crucifixes and there's other sort of religious symbols and that we're just throwing on this fire. We have to be... You Wait, know. you're throwing that crucifix in the fire? I don't oh, yeah, know. I'm just out of... You told me to. You told me to. Object to that. It wasn't idea. mine. Yeah. You said, take the box, throw the box in the no, fire. I already threw not. like a handful of them on there anyway. Like, don't they the have like a recycling about? center for crucifixes yes. or something? A handful yeah, of crucifixes. It's they churches. Like, like saw them and hand them Amen. out again. You're thinking of holy water. Right? Honestly, we got to be careful when it comes to the topic of possession because it's actually been... Attempted at least to be used in a court of law. Have you all heard about the trial of Arnie Johnson? No. How's that spelled? It's A R N E. His middle name is actually Cheyenne, which is really Damn. fancy. C H E Y. Yeah, C H E Y E N N E. And then Johnson, spelled like Johnson. 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 Now, kind of an interesting little tale. Let me tell it to you. The trial of Arnie Cheyenne Johnson is also known as the Devil Made Me Do It case. Seriously? Uh, yeah. I think I've heard of this, right? It's spooky. It is the first case of someone using demonic possession as a defense in a murder trial. Really? Now, it all began on July 3rd, 1980. 1980? 1980. <laughs> Was the first time someone thought to do that? Yeah, yeah. That, I mean, that is <laughs> insane. God yeah, damn. Yeah. In the history of murders. <laughs> The first time someone used devil made me do it was 1980 in America. Because oh. everyone before that, surely, wait, like... Wait a minute. That doesn't surprise me at all. Damn it, man. Surely everyone thought, like, there's no way they're going to buy that if uh, right. I say that. There's of, no like, way they're going to go. Thousands of convicted like, murderers. Get on the bus. Exactly. 
sitting in prison, the like, oh, the devil town. made me do it. Yeah. The guys are like, nah, get the fuck out of here. That's not <laughs> it's so great that you're not uh, disturbed that someone did it. It's that it took them that long. It just seems like it should have been a thing already. <laughs> I mean, the first thing, why'd you kill that person? Demons. Demons. Totally demons. Damn, demons. <laughs> Shit, man. You gotta watch out for those. <laughs> get your on head. you go. <laughs> <laughs> on your way. Now, it was July 3rd, 1980, as previously stated. Now, Arnie Johnson is then fiance Debbie Glatzel, I guess, Glatzel, G-L-A-T-Z-E-L, Glatzel, had just moved into a new rental property. That night, Debbie's 11-year-old brother, David, woke up screaming. He began sobbing, saying that he had seen, quote, a man with big black eyes, a thin face with animal features and jagged teeth, pointed ears, horns, and hooves. The Beast Man told David to beware. The vision shook David to his core and even changed his personal demeanor. He went from being a happy, playful child to a quiet, nervous, and sullen little boy. This is after he had this vision? After having the vision of this Beast Man. And the nightmares continued. David had visions of the Beast Man, telling him he was going to devour Devour his soul. Cuts and bruises began to appear on David's skin. At night, Arnie and Debbie would hear strange bumps and growls from the attic, but they could never find the source. Then, David began to see the Beast Man when he was awake, and even during the day. He said the Beast would appear as an old man with a white beard, dressed... (laughs) Dressed with pajama pants. No, it is flannel. Pants. It is flannel. Yeah. Wait, okay, so you are uh, describing yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was I'm slightly like, crooked, this kid. <laughs> His friends described him as a dick. And he had a 24 pack of Natty Ice. <laughs> Promo. I'm cutting back. It's an 18. I'm cutting back. It's an 18. But couldn't that also be like Santa Claus? Well, it, it, all the, the rumblings actual, on the roof, all him tussling around off season, sound, practicing to get down the chimney. Oddly Santa Clausian, Santa. yeah, off season Santa's got a cross train. He's training. <laughs> this is his no. training ground on the Home and Garden Network. <laughs> off season Santa. <laughs> well, the actual description before he went off on a rail was a uh, an old man with a white beard dressed in a flannel shirt and jeans. Oh. So there's oh. no damn way it's me because you ain't gonna see me in jeans. Finally, they turned to a priest. They asked him to come to the house and bless it. This had little to no effect. In fact, it seemed to maybe make things worse. The sounds in the attic became louder. David's dreams and visions became more frequent and more violent. Then it got even worse from there. David started to hiss and growl at his family. He began to speak in multiple voices. David would quote from the Bible and even Paradise Lost, for some reason, a book that there's no way he'd ever read. By Milton. At night, someone would have to watch David sleep, as he would awake several times throughout the night and even had to go through violent seizures. Finally, at the end of the rope, the family reached out to the only people that anyone in this situation could look to for help. Ed and Lorraine Warren. Yes. Oh, no. Friends of the show. Oh, no! Oh, no! Yeah, they had to go to him. They had to go to them. And so Lorraine later recounted her first meeting with David. And she recounted this to People Magazine, where you go to for real paranormal information. Of course. Where else? She said, quote, While Ed interviewed the boy, I saw a black misty form next to him, which told me we were dealing with something of a negative nature. Duh. (laughs) Soon, the child was complaining that invisible hands were choking him. They were then red marks on him. He said that he had the feeling of being hit. They determined it was a case of possession, and they brought in other priests and experts to examine David. At one point, it was believed that David was possessed by a total of 43 demons. And what? that's demons. And I put the extra no. A in there, like D E A. So demons. that's the demons. Yeah, like demons. Demons. So much worse. 43, so much worse. Though, that's 43. That's a lot. That's a lot. Wow. Right, but it's 43 after, like, out of 77 million demons. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of demons. There's a lot of demons out True, there. True, but 43 is still. That's like a school bus worth. Well, I mean, that's what do you like think a, they take up physical that's space? That's like the football team and the band. I can't stop thinking about a school bus of demons right now because it looks so like damn a, cool. And some wearing like shoulder so pads bad. and some having, <laughs> some like, trombones. And shit. Yeah. yeah, and some being, like, majorettes. Yeah, I totally. Blaring, I want to go on that field trip. Blaring white zombie. All in one kid's head. 
And their, their, <laughs> their fight cheer is, give him hell, right? Now, they put David through a series of, quote, lesser exorcisms. You know, just mild, soothing right, right, right. spa exorcisms, you know. Reading with the, you know, out loud at you. Yeah, like, like with some eucalyptus. Like, hey, hey, get out. Get out of there. Come on, buddy. Eat get the- out of there. <laughs> Scram. <laughs> What'd you scoop? Now, during these events, David was said to have levitated, stopped breathing for long periods of time. Jesus. So dying. And at one point, started claiming to know the future and saying that, oddly enough, Arnie would eventually commit murder. What? This is ridiculous. So, (laughs) as most of our stories are. Then, during one of the last exorcisms, Arnie fucked up. And fucked up bad. In the middle of an exorcism, Arnie taunted one of the demons. He told the demon to possess him. No. Uh Even suggesting that the demon was too afraid to do so. He basically called demons pussies and said, come on, what you got? He basically said, hey, demon, demon. After this amazingly great idea, the Warrens told the local police they might want to keep an eye on Arnie. (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> I love that. They're like, hey guys, I want to watch this guy for the next few days. Now, a few days later, Arnie claims that the demon attacked him while driving. He said that a demon took control of the car and smashed it into a tree. Arnie was luckily unharmed. Now, after the incident, Arnie was drawn to an old well on their property. He claimed that he knew that that's where the demon lived. And Arnie says that this was the last time he encountered the demon while fully lucid. Because after looking the demon in the eyes, he became fully possessed. Arnie began to retreat into himself. He would, like David before, growl and hiss at nothing. And said that he himself could now see the beast man. I mean, I get like that when I have like severe like, mm-hmm. indigestion or like heartburn. When I'm like, <laughs> yeah! <You> get- <laughs> I tried the Taco Bell fries last night. I felt Those exactly so the same good. way. It was like, I need a, like a, a painful release. Yeah. <laughs> no, the painful uh, release is a few hours after you've had the fries. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, yes. That's the, the morning after. Painful release yeah. right there. All right. So finally, they decided to move to a new property that was rented to them by a man named Alan Bono. Or Bono. Could be Bono. Could be Bono. One was talented and one was an Irish musician. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh. Got him! Hey! Da, 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 da. Fucking shots at you too. I like it. <laughs> I'm all What's up, you two? <laughs> now, on February 16th, 1981, things went from bad to murder. Arnie called off work and spent the day with Debbie and Debbie's nine year old cousin, Mary. Was Mary, uh, uh, so Debbie was his fiance? Fiance. Okay. okay. Alan Bono came over and decided to take them all out for lunch at a local bar. <laughs> what could go wrong? Lunch at a bar. <laughs> Points. Now, according to witnesses, Alan and Arnie both began to drink rather heavily. Because, why wouldn't you? So afterwards, they all returned to the kennel where Debbie worked. She was a dog groomer. <laughs> and so, she, she groomed dogs. I know, but it's What's so, so damn funny about dog I mean, groomers? It's, it's, it's acceptable to kick kids out and just get fucking hammered. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, was I was a nine-year-old out. Yeah. And then went to a dog kennel. Yeah, exactly. Wasted. I guarantee yep. you I had that exact same afternoon with my mom. I guarantee you. I grew up, I went to Lyman right there next to dog track. I guarantee you. Simpler Dear times. times. Got to sit at the bar today with mom. I had to pet a dog. Only had three legs. <laughs> Good day. Good day in the Ellis household. P.S. How is a dog with three legs so fast? Lost a lot of money. Okay. <laughs> Afterwards, they all returned to the kennel where Debbie worked. After some words between Alan and Artie were exchanged, things began to heat up. The reason for the argument was never revealed. But at one point, Debbie and Mary tried to leave, but Alan grabbed Mary and refused to let her go. Alan is... Alan is the uh, the owner of the new oh. home that they moved into, gotcha. who took him out to lunch. Gotcha. Which, who goes to lunch with their Just, landlord randomly? Like, that's weird. Because he said he's going to take him to a bar. I'm not going to bar lunch with my landlord. Hold on. Let's, okay, wait, Trey. What, watch. Hey, man, you want to go to a bar? Are you my landlord? <laughs> Touche. 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 You win this time, Kaz. You win this time, Kaz. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Alan Bono grabs Mary, the little girl, and refuses to let her go. At this point, Arnie began to growl and hiss. Debbie moved to get between the two, 
but she was too slow. Arnie swiftly pulled out a five-inch pocket knife and stabbed Alan repeatedly. Alan died hours later, suffering from four or five, quote, tremendous wounds. They actually used the word tremendous to describe wounds. One of the wounds stretched from his stomach all the way to the base of his heart. Oh, I don't use pincushion like that. Yeah, so he really went in for the gutting right there. Wow. Now, Arnie fled the scene and was captured two miles away and was held on bail of $125,000. The trial took place on October 28th, 1981. Johnson's lawyer attempted to submit a plea of not guilty by virtue of possession. But it was quickly rejected since it was impossible to prove in a court of law. Yep. The jury deliberated for 15 hours and found him guilty of first-degree manslaughter. And by the way, remember, you can't say manslaughter without laughter. And they sentenced him to 10 to 20 years in prison, and he served only five. What? Wow. Yep, only so, five. Wait, Alan totally how? died, right? Dead as hell. Okay. Dead as hell. On a scale from 1 to 10, he was dead. What would you give it? Okay. The couple are still together, and their story has been told in multiple books and TV shows. So regardless if you believe in demons or demons or not, if you ever attend an exorcism, do not, I repeat, do not coerce a demon to enter your body because it just might take you up on the offer. That's interesting that you see uh, both sides of this. Well, I mean, I guess I see both sides. I mean, demon people, the two sides, really. <laughs> it's pretty clear cut. Yeah, pretty clear cut, I think. You don't even know evil from evil. Uh, well, I guess I am talking to a replicating revenant, so you might know a little bit, just a teeny bit more about evil than I do. But I am. No, okay, you're, you're you probably know a lot more about evil. Yeah, you're a big sweetie. You're yeah, a, I know. You're actually, well. shut up. Dick. So there's a, there's an evil out there that's bigger than an evil that possesses multiple members of a family. Ordering them to kill and slice people open like, you know, stuck pigs. Bingo. There's yeah. A, wow. Really? Okay. Just that confident. What's up? I mean, I mean, we've talked about some evil tonight, by the way, as yeah. we sit here. And by the way, we got to admit, this bonfire is absolutely beautiful of all these boxes going on right now. I mean, the toxic flames are absolutely... It just looks like a toxic mess. as hell. I feel woozy. I, I mean, in a good way though, kind of. You know, yeah. it's like it's like gravy water it's mixed like, with a good roll. It's like my feet are like moonwalks. <laughs> <laughs> I remember those. Those are good. They're like moon moonwalks. Get him away from the fumes. Right? Yeah. Drag yeah. him away Back from up, you. Man. Got too and many put me f- closer to the fumes. Can, can, someone, the fumes. can someone Nancy Kerrigan him just to get him off of the property? <laughs> and, like, Jesus, who seems unnecessary? That was really aggressive. Oh, okay. that was so much fun. I'm, I'm dragging him away. Take him away. Take him away. That guy's through, been through some shit. We can all admit this guy's been through some shit. Okay, we got rid of him now. So, um, I'm interested. I, I, I am interested as a student of evil, not a participant in evil. I, you know, completely, you know, no, no participation of evil. But uh, what is this darker evil you speak of? Think of evil dying okay. and then coming back as more evil. That would be you. Like hell. You're thinking of a hell spawn? Pretty close. Oh, shit. I'm intrigued. Let's take a little break. Let's talk about it. <laughs> Welcome back to Fort Fritz. We are uh, at a crossroads. Angela says she has something that is truly evil in this box that looks Pretty evil. Like if a if an emo teenager spray painted it purple and pink. That's evil. That's evil to you. Yeah. You have a that? really low bar for evil. I do. Well, I mean, it's like evil from Spencer's Gifts. Evil. Ooh, okay. That's, that's, so that's valid. like like eighties evil. New metal evil. Yeah. But as a DJ, corn. <laughs> yeah, it's like corn with a K. Like hot topic evil. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Wait, what did I say? That's a that's, that's, that's emo evil. <laughs> it's the same thing. Just like an older man yeah. version of yeah. the same thing. All right. Okay, we've looked at a lot of evil. We've seen a lot of evil. We burned a lot of evil. Sure. And uh, but if you're talking about this box being the ultimate evil, we should not burn that. Okay. If you if you burn that, you're going to release it, and it's going to just like these wonderful, delicious fumes. I'm thinking more from an educational standpoint. Like if we have the ultimate evil here, we're gonna like we gotta study it. it. We gotta like right. We're gonna just kill it. No, no. Let's let let's get down with this ultimate evil. Well, I guess also step one. Is it taped or is it quad folded on the top? Yeah, because if it's quad folded, we'll never get into that thing, and it's only a mystery for the rest of time. 
It's definitely taped, and we should definitely open it up. Wait, why? 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 Okay. why? If it's true evil, why do we got to open this up, Angela? Because, whereas most evil things you do not want to burn, you can burn this and kill it. Oh. Have you guys ever heard of the Skadigamooch? <laughs> Skadigamooch? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what? That's good. Skadigamooch? Not the Skadigamooch, and not the Skadigamooch. The Skadigamooch. What was the elephant TV show? Sharon Lewis and Brim. Yeah. And Points. Points. Points to the board. So this is true evil. True, true evil. Can you spell that? That is S K A D E G A M U T C. Skidamooch. 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 It's ska. Ska is evil. It's, yeah. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Put it down, put it down, put it down. Born from the corpse of a black magic shaman. The Skidigamooch is an undead monster known to haunt the Wabanaki tribes of the Quebec main area of North America. Essentially, it is an evil sorcerer who refuses to die and comes back as a blood-sucking vampire ghost witch to haunt the night. In the daytime, a ghost witch looks like a corpse or a zombie. It is quite vulnerable when the sun is out and keeps in the shadows. It cannot be killed by weapons. The only permanent way to kill a Skidigamooch is to burn it until it's only ashes scattered to the four winds. What? It's got to really burn it. You can't just singe it. You got to really burn that thing all the way down. You have to burn it, and then the ashes have to float away from all of each other. Would it like, suck if it was like like a no wind day? Like you burn it, it's like come on, little breeze, something, help me out here. The ashes just stay in a pile, and then slowly it's returned to a face. You're like, God damn it! You guys sit there and fan it. Like come on. That's Start what you kicking just, it around. You just get a fan. You just get a fan. Yeah, yeah. And just, <laughs> or just this like shirtless like NFL fan just laying next to a fire going. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why is he shirtless in your world? You it's also inhale that a little bit as yeah, you're doing sure. that. It's With called, the NFL fan, you certainly do. It's called theater of the mind, imagination. Mind <laughs> At night, it morphs. By the way, if you don't want to say skadegamooch, you can call it just the ghost witch. Thank God, that's a lot easier. So much easier. It morphs into a ball of light and scours the land for prey. It is said that simply making eye contact or hearing the voice of the witch can even bring a curse upon those who hear it. And this is at night? Correct. Okay. And during the day, it's a zombie? During the day, it kind of hides in the shadows. It's like a vampire. It's like the European folklore of a vampire, but the Native Americans. It feasts on the blood and flesh of humans, mostly small groups traveling or hunting in the woods at night. Wow. The ghost witch attacks in two different ways. One way is to become undead during the burial and attack those who are part of the funeral. Oh, man. So as they're doing really the funeral... It changes the event, doesn't it? It just kind of comes out and attacks everybody. <laughs> I mean, yeah. You're like all sad about Bob being dead. It's like, oh, God, here comes Bob! <laughs> right, it's like, Get that it's a wrong, rabbit. motherfuckers! <laughs> You having to draw straws to see who's going to be a pallbearer? Uh, <laughs> I'm not getting next to I didn't even thing. know Bob. <laughs> <laughs> the coffin is rattling as I'm carrying it. Angela, how, do, how does someone become undead prior or, yeah, I guess prior to burial? So an evil sorcerer or dark magic shaman, when it is killed, does not want to be killed okay. mm-hmm. and will come back to life using black magic. So as soon as you kill it, it just doesn't want to be dead. Gotcha. Who does? Yeah. <laughs> Same, right? <laughs> I understand this guy. Yeah. Another way that it can kill everybody is to fly around at night waiting for someone who has fallen behind from a group within the woods. Laggards. So if someone's pouting, yes. Yeah. So, so, what, what did you say somebody <laughs> pouting? They're pouting. <laughs> no. like they're unhappy <laughs> that they're, they're just like kicking rocks behind like the main yeah. group. Like, ah, <laughs> damn it. Like again. A, 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 ni- a petulant nine year old who's like, you think I'm going to go to Magic Kingdom. <laughs> like, nope. Someone lagging behind. And the Scaramooch comes in. Goes, <laughs> <laughs> Did you just call it a Scaramooch? Yeah. <laughs> Scaramooch, Scaramooch, gonna eat this little kid now. So, Beulah Dark Cloud Tahamont of the Abenaki tribe told the story in 1903. An old shaman had died. He practiced black magic, and his people had buried him by placing him within the branches of a tree instead of in the ground. So they are disrespecting It's very disrespectful, kind of throwing it up in the branches. After some time had passed, in this grove where the shaman was dangled to rest, 
<laughs> Come on. That was really that was a good so description. Was so great. That was good description. Dangled to rest is a great, that was weird, excellent. like, comedy black metal band would be dangled to rest. I don't know why the explosion of laughter after that. Free until they cut me down. <laughs> Thank you. A young Wabanaki couple decided to use the shelter of the tree to spend the night. As they sat in the light of the cook fire, full bellies, the woman began to examine their home for the evening. When she looked up, she saw dark figures hanging from the branches. I'm sitting here rubbing my top club. I'm thinking that chicken Alfredo you made was so delicious. Oh my God, what's that? Is that a shaman? <laughs> Is he dead? Oh no! Oh no! These are Quebec Native Americans. What was that accent? It's actually very close to that. Oh. Feeling very uncomfortable at seeing this, she asked what the figures were. They are only the the dead dead of long long ago, ago. her husband said, as he put his head down to rest and falls asleep. What? I like this guy. (laughs) disconcerting Takes it in stride. He was just very tired, just wanted to go to bed. He took it in stride. He was like, like, oh, those are just the, that's just the spirits of the dead. Go and take a little nappy nap. Yes, he said they are only the dead of long ago and just said we need to just go to bed and get up in the morning and continue on our journey. He gave no fucks. Goddamn right. Long story short. Could have been super dark that night, though. The wife suggested they stay up all night for safety, Uh, but her husband told her to get sleep and to not worry about it. (laughs) Why was move from the tree not an option with these people? (laughs) Just just right underneath them. It's going to be fine. That's where they built the fire. Go over there. (laughs) Right? We either stay here all night or we stay up all night. Can we just go like maybe like to like 20, 30 yards over there and not by the dead body tree? Listen, (laughs) the wife suggested this. The husband did not want to comply. Classic. He's like, I am just trying. I got to get up early. He's very tired. The woman could not fall asleep, obviously, with these hanging black figures above them. She stared up at them as the fire subsided. Sure enough, as soon as the fire went out, she heard grotesque gnawing like teeth against bone. Ooh. Uh, Never good. It was close, but she was too scared to move or figure out where it was coming from. No! She sat and listened to this crunching and smacking for what seemed like hours. Finally, she couldn't take it anymore and reach for her husband as Don approached. He was sound asleep, and all of a sudden, the gnawing stopped. As the sun rose, she got the courage to, again to move, and she motioned to wake her husband. He was dead. The whole left side of his body had been eaten, and his heart was gone. Oh, okay, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's rough. She ran and ran until she found others to help and brought them back to his body. They did not initially believe her, thinking she murdered her husband and was making up some paranormal reason for, her, for his death. And ate half of him. <laughs> <laughs> And then they saw the dead shaman tied up above her husband's body. They took it down and unwrapped it from the black cloth to find its mouth and face covered in fresh blood. Ah, uh, uh, it's crazy. That's nuts. So anyway, this little piece in this box here, this is a piece of the, it's going to get mooch. So I think we need to burn this. Is it would- the shroud? Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, here's the thing. I've already uh, taken the shroud off. And um, oh my god, it's really idea. disturbing. Not a good idea. But don't I look great? Yeah. Feel really, really good. Should I take it off though? Yeah, pop it off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pop it off. Smells like death. That. Yeah, it's probably a good idea. Probably a good idea. All right. There you go. Take it away from me because if you don't, I'm going to take it. We could just throw you on the fire with it. I That's mean, fine. You know, take if you it, feel comfortable Danny. with it, yeah. we just toss you. You know, make it easy. Well, one toss. Do you think you're an evil shaman? Uh, basically. I mean, I mean not kind of, professionally, but at least, you know, yeah, like on the weekends, you know, have a little fun. You at least have the fashion sense. Yes, <laughs> yes. Well, I think we can all agree with shopping. that. Yes. I, I, let's put it this way. My closet has way more robes in it than it should. An urban shaman. <laughs> urban shaman. <laughs> okay, so uh, here's a couple of things. Uh, and that was the Skada Mooch. Skadega Mooch. Skadega. Skadega Mooch. Okay, there you go. At um, that was terrifying. Please, can we burn that, please, Kaz? Move it. I'm going to kick it. I'm not going to actually touch it. I'm going to kick it. It's Probably a smart and, idea. Yeah. The fire's actually not <clears throat> not going too hot anymore. It's just kind of smoking and Relax. charring. Stretch a little bit. You want me to stretch? You uh, do- we need yeah, something else. Do so we have more pictures and shit to burn? You like need a- to get the ashes out of here. Take your shirt off. You want me to pop it off? To, uh, lay next to the fire. Just pop. Okay. Tonight has been strange because after finding this garage containing all of uh, Felix's old memorabilia, uh, including photographs of 
nipples and ball sacks and also dog tails and uh, puppy tails. Why doesn't he have any cars in this garage? That's true. <laughs> exactly. It smells like motor oil, though, right? Like it does. Yeah. Doesn't make any. I sense. hope it's motor oil. I hope. <laughs> it went, it's, uh, it's, otherwise, it's something really dark, black, and nooky. So we start off with uh, Rodney Alcala, right? Alcala. Alcala. Alcala, who was uh, a contestant on the Gaty Game show back in 1978. Yes. But before that, he was already um, tried in a murder trial. It was an attempted murder and rape case. With an eight-year-old? With an eight-year-old. Uh, and then, uh, but we also had multiple reports of him kind of changing his appearances over the years. Uh, his nice feathered hair from the dating game yes. back to a, a more close-cropped, uh, shaggy appearance. Um, but at the same time, evil, having probably killed over 100 people. It is estimated up to as many as 130 people. Because wow. of all of the photographs found in his different storage units, right? Correct. We then go to Arnie Cheyenne Johnson. Yes. Which, Man Daddy, you said uh, this was the devil made me do it yep. defense? Yep. Saying that uh, a demon possessed him and made him stab a guy. Um, this demon had animalistic appearances. Uh, a beast man, if you will. Uh, but it also turned into an old man wearing flannel with jeans. That's that's when the uh, the little boy would see him during the day. In his in his nightmares, he was the beast man. But he'd see them in the day like he was an actual old man wearing a flannel uh, shirt and jeans with a white beard. Who also saw this uh, demon as a black misty form? That was uh, that was Lorraine Warren. So this was a multiple person uh, encounter with this entity. Yes. Yes. We then go to the Skadegamooch. Very well done. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which was the corpse of a black magic witch? Black magic woman. <laughs> was that close or no? Black magic shaman. Black magic shaman. Uh, this motherfucker refuses to die. Yep. Just <laughs> and wants to live in all of its evilness. Who also, uh, during the day, appears like a zombie. Mm -hmm. At night is a ball of light. Correct. Shape shifting. Correct. And can change appearances. And also, like Rodney Alcala, in some way was a necromancer and would reanimate corpses. Mm -hmm. As Rodney would beat victims within a, an inch of their life and then would bring them back, right? Huh? So someone who was in control of making other people know that they were the ultimate supreme being, which is evil. Evil yes. is power used in a negative way. Yes. Um... Yeah, let's. Can we burn the entire garage? Yeah, I don't, I don't I mean, want anything in here anymore. That might be a bad idea because it is connected to the entire you know house. It's going to burn real fast. You oily rags and cardboard boxes, pictures and, of and evil and butts. shaman shrouds. I'm not the saying nipple butts. Those are super combustible. No, no, I'm not. I'm not we like just burn like an entire like pile of sage or something, you know, <laughs> and get like uh, like a drum circle happening or something. I just want to burn the entire garage. Can we set the garage on fire? What could go wrong? Wait, wait, wait. There are like baby pictures of schmutzy in here. Ooh, oh, okay. okay. Now there's sentimental value. That's, that can't happen, I guess. I, I guess we'll go many? with the uh, just, sage and bleach option. You know, just we have uh, to keep the whole garage because of a couple pictures. We can move the pictures into another room. Whoa, 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 whoa! I found the box. Got it. Oh, right thank God. Yeah. Found yeah. It. All right, light up the garage. Then. Light up the garage. Do it up. Let's just, do it up. Let, all right, go Shouldn't for it. Shouldn't be a garage. There's no cars and right. It's not even. It's just. It's just a place so to put we, fire now. We, yeah, it's just evidence. It's Where you store your fire. Too late, it's already burning. Oh, oh, guys, oh shit. Fast. Uh, it's going guys, really get quick. Get out of here. Oh, oh my God. God. Get out of here. Okay, this is good. Okay, okay. Uh, I guess we're going to get out of here really quick. Uh, okay, well, um, thank you all very much uh, for listening. This is season two of uh, Ford Fritz. Uh, check us out on uh, Libsyn on uh, iHeartRadio. I'm going to get my black robe. I want to see my you black robe. You shouldn't do that. You shouldn't do that. You yeah. don't need to go with that. It's a really no, bad time. Like uh, it's like basically going into a pool it of napalm at this like point. It like heaven. Oh, oh my God. God. Okay, uh, we it don't know. It felt like if, heaven to me. This might be the last episode of season two because I don't know if uh, Fritz is going to make it out of this one. Uh, he, he, he seems to be he's burning pretty. a little bit and he's He's, he's crouched, nimble, though. He's, he's, he's crouched and shaved accordingly. It's hot. It's, it's too hot. It looks like he greased himself down, too. When did yeah. he do that? He's like going into it like with like a, a fervor. Low. He's, he's low. buttered. He's buttered the in a way that live. I've never seen another he's man. Live. Oh, look at the go. Army right, crawling. Well, he's, he's he, he, as he's crouching into looking to get his, uh, he likes his accoutrement. Oh, you got it. You got it. Uh, uh, Fritz, you got to burn that. You you have to burn that. Never. No, I'm serious. That really has to burn. No, I'm serious. No, I'm serious. That no. has to be. Ashes to ashes, baby. Come no. on. All right. So uh, it's up to you, Fritz. Either, either we burn you and the... Uh, 
in the shroud. No, I'll, I'll, I'll okay. That's you gonna fine. put it on the fire? I'll, I'll burn. You gonna yeah, light it up? You're gonna have a dead Fritz and a ghost witch. All you right. Better hurry. This garage is going really fast. All right. Throw the shroud into the garage. Throw the shroud into the garage and let it burn with everything else. Let it go, Fritz. There you go. Let it go. It's just, no, it's just naked and greased down, standing there. No, sh- no shroud. Uh, what, what if we get you? Let's go get you another shroud, man. We'll get you yeah. like we'll go. There's plenty of shit in here. We'll, we'll put it on your back and it'll look like a shroud. Let's go to that shroud store down the street. Shrouds are us. Yes. How do we not think about that? that cool. The lamest name for a shroud store. All right. Thank you very much for listening. Check us out on all the social media platforms. We are on Stitcher. We are on Libsyn. We are on YouTube. We are on iTunes. We are on iHeartRadio. We are on all the platforms you can find. But the main thing is please share. Sharing is caring. Thank you very much for listening. This has been Fort Fritz. Larry Snoot here, attorney at law. Uh, We'd like to remind you folks, never play with fire. We've had a lot of fun here today, but all kidding aside, dousing your garage in gasoline and lighting it on fire is a bad idea.